All right, we've been keeping a close eye on what's going on in Britain right now, particularly Liz Truss, the uh, prime minister of all about a month in power, and already they're calling for her head. She's under enormous pressure after a budget failed and an attempt to cut taxes failed as well among those at her own party, and even the markets were, be were rebelling. Uh, think of our markets doing the same here in the face of tax cuts promise. It, it would be an anomaly, to put it mildly, but it is not an alien concept. Piers Morgan is here right now. Piers Morgan Uncensored, the host. A crackerjack writer and thinker. I love the way he communicates because <laughs> it you. gets through my thick skull. <laughs> um, good to see you, Piers. Uh, we were talking at the break. I know this is unusual, so it's my view here, but a, 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 maybe a warning for conservatives who are already, you know, chomping at the bit to take over the mm -hmm. House, maybe the Senate, that they're going to cut taxes, that they're going to do a lot of things. Uh, but a reminder, maybe, on Liz Truss, you better have that all ironed out and how you're going to pay for it before you introduce it, right? Well, the most startling and disturbing and ultimately unsuccessful thing that she said when she announced this mini budget, very much only been in power several weeks, right. was she said she hadn't done the groundwork when it all fell in her face. It was like, how could you not do the groundwork as a new prime minister in a financial crisis? Well, she how could blamed you it on the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who well, she forced out, right? Which, which was chucking him under the bus right, to save her right. own skin, let's be clear, because Kwasi Kwarteng and her were the only two, it turned out, who did know what they were about to do. Even the Cabinet were not informed or consulted about what they were planning. And the truth is, they came out with all this stuff. It was like, you know, a female Santa Claus saying, here you go, everybody, right. tax cuts across the board, you're all going to have this cut, this cut, this cut. Uh, she lifted the cap on bankers' bonuses. She didn't set any windfall taxes against energy companies. All of it was designed to make everyone feel great. But, of course, what it really did was it freaked the markets out because there was no sense that they'd done any planning for this. There was no indication of how they would fund these enormous tax cuts. But normally markets would welcome a cut in their taxes, Well, right? they would, but right to the point when they realised they didn't have the money to do any of Got this. It. So now we're in the unique position where it's all been reversed within three weeks, all of it. So the new chancellor's come in, Jeremy Hunt, who is the complete opposite economically, really, from Liz Truss. He's reversed everything. He now has all the power. The markets have kind of stabilised, but they're really waiting to see, even now, given the damage that she has done with this budget to the stability economically of the country, it's believed they now need to find another $20 billion just to repair the damage of is what they've done. Is she toast, then? How would you describe I think... I mean, I love my toast, and I would say she right. is toast with a fresh spread of butter and a dollop of Marmite, because wow. I don't see any way that she survives this. Her credibility has been completely destroyed at a speed I've never seen for any prime minister or any world leader but she in such a short space of time. the next Maggie Thatcher. Here's the problem with that. Yeah. She said repeatedly that she was Thatcherite in her thinking. When Margaret Thatcher came to power, she actually inherited quite a rough economy. She didn't cut taxes. She actually put a number of taxes up. She actually did do a windfall tax against energy companies. By doing all that, she managed to cool inflation and stabilise the British economy. When it was stabilised from a position of strength, then she slashed income tax and became known as the great tax cutter. Right. But Thatcher always tried very carefully, step by step, getting the, the economy to a place where you could be bold. This wasn't bold. This was casino politics. It was reckless. It was disgraceful. And I, honestly, I've never seen anything quite like this. I would be staggered if she lasts a week. But, really? if she, but if she does, the happiest person will be Sir Keir Starmer, leader of the opposition Labour Party, who is, I think, 36 points but ahead of the But they can't have an election or won't likely until 2024. I right? wouldn't make any prediction at this stage about anything other than I've never seen a bigger gap in my lifetime between the Labour opposition and the incumbent Conservative government. And if it was like this in an election, almost all the Conservative members of Parliament would have a risk of losing their, their jobs and seats. That is why I would not buy any money on stock in Liz Truss, because the moment Conservative MPs think that their own jobs are going to be at risk, not just hers, they'll be uh, ruthless it's, in disposing it, of well, it. But it's well, one of Queen Elizabeth's last acts was to allow her to form a cabinet. The last time we uh, saw the Queen. Right, and this hands would presumably be one of King Charles's first acts, yeah. uh, saying goodbye and having a new Prime Minister. Well, there was a great, great, a great bit of footage, actually, of Charles meeting 
uh, Liz Truss the other day, in which he was caught on camera after shaking her hand saying, Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Which I think pretty, so much, already, pretty much sums up what we're he, all thinking. How is he adjusting to this not giving his opinion thing, following his mom? It's, it's very interesting for Charles because he's always been so opinionated. Right. It must be very hard to get to your mid 70s and then take on a role where opinions are just simply not allowed. Yeah. And the reason they're not allowed is very straightforward. The reason the Queen was so popular. The moment you express an opinion, as we know in these tribal, toxic, political, partisan days, you alienate a large body of, of the country. And which you, you express his opinions. Can't and as a, as a monarch, you have to be a monarch for all. So he's now basically being gagged in his mid-70s. I don't know about you, Neil, but I've met a lot of people in their mid-70s. They don't normally react very well to being told right. they can't speak their mind. So it'd be an interesting <laughs> challenge for the king. And off my castle yeah. garden. <laughs> um, let me ask you, as you know, I'm a royal expert. Yeah. I watched The Crown. And now I know that the, in the next series that's coming out, I guess it's going to be Netflix drops it next month. Uh, there's one episode that features uh, King Charles, or then Prince Charles, pushing for his mother to abdicate the throne or to resign. Do you give that any credence? Utter nonsense. Uh, and the problem here for The Crown, and I know the writer Peter Morgan, he's a great right. writer, it's been a brilliant series. The problem now is they're reaching modern times. They're reaching an era when a lot of people are still alive who were involved in a lot of these more contentious no things. Right. And you've got Prime Minister at the time, John Major, who's come out and said this categorically did not happen. It's damaging because the Queen has now died. Charles okay. is now king, and you have this, this suggestion that, Not true, that he, that he wanted drama, his mother TV to be unseated. Drama, TV it drama. is... Uh, you and I know TV drama better than most. It is All good right. TV drama, but it's not true. OK, I'll put you down as a maybe on that. <laughs> uh, Piers Morgan, he's the best. Uh, Piers Morgan, uncensored, travels the world everywhere. I was shocked to see him here.